everyone. Welcome back to a new video. Uh, this is Apple Bark. I'm assuming most of you watching this video um, probably aren't watching because you're a subscriber, or you're aware of um, the past of my channel, but you probably just stumbled across this video. Um, either way, that's fine. Welcome to the channel. Um, I know I haven't uploaded in absolutely forever, but, um, you know, really YouTube has never been much of a consistent hobby for me. I made a few videos um, when I was really young. Most of them are private now. Um, so you really haven't been missing out on much, but, uh, yeah, it just sort of struck me today. I thought, why not do, like, an overview of my record collection and hopefully, um, just kind of give you guys an idea of the kind of music that I listen to, the kind of music that I enjoy that's personal to me. And then hopefully along the way, um, put you guys on to some, some records that, uh, that, uh, that you'll, you'll enjoy and give you some good recommendations, so. So let's get started. First record is Wax Man by Harry Permazel. Now this, in my opinion, is an incredibly underappreciated, um, underrecognized record. It's become one of my favorites over the years, but I almost, I don't really hear anybody talking about it. Like, um, it's just, uh, you know, it's not very popular because it's just like this, um, pretty small band camp artist that put it out um but it's just it's definitely one of the the gems in the rough of all the um just the the heap of indie music that's on band camp um but just really beautifully uh arranged mostly acoustic based indie folk indie pop i guess you could say very much in the lines of elliot smith which i'll get to later um because I do have quite a few Elliott Smith records, but, um, yeah, so if you like Elliott Smith, I'm sure you'll love this. Just an incredible record. Um, comes with a poster insert as well, which I have hung up on my wall, actually. But, um, yeah, check this out if you haven't. Um, it's also great just to support this artist, because, you know, he's a really small, art small artist, and I really wish, uh, he would get more appreciation than he does for this album. All right. Next album, we have Sea Change by Beck. This right here, one of my all-time favorites. One of the albums that got me into music the most, I feel like. Um, I'm sure if you know Beck, you know that he's kind of the king of alternative music. He's basically made everything from R&B, uh, funk to rap folk, if you want to call it that, to metal, like... This dude's basically done everything, but this happens to be kind of my favorite side of his discography, which is the much more slow and mellow and um, very sad and, and, and sort of syrupy music that he does, uh, as the cover sort of seem to imply, uh, seems to imply, which I love. Um, but yeah, this is probably my, my favorite Beck record. It's just, a, just an incredible record overall. Um, it has a really cool design on the inner gatefold there double album um has like lost cause on it which is just a beautiful song one of my favorite beck songs it's all in your mind uh the golden age i guess i'm doing fine blow some tears little one i mean pretty much every song in this album is just is just genius so highly recommend checking that out if you want some really some really beautiful sad singer songwriter sort of music um Next we have, speaking of singer-songwriter music, this is Elliot Smith, Either Or, which, if I'm being honest, is probably my favorite album of all time. Um, Elliot Smith is just, he's totally unmatched as, as a songwriter. I haven't really heard anything else like him. You know, even people will commonly compare, um, you know, like Nick Drake and Sufjan Stevens, stuff like that. I actually have a Nick Drake record coming up, but... Um, um, you know, while I can see sort of see those comparisons on the surface, the more that you listen to his music, the more you realize it's sort of, it's very one of a kind. You might call this like indie folk, indie rock. Um, this record came out 97, I believe, something like that. Um, but it's just, nothing is like Elliot Smith, man. He's by far my greatest musical inspiration um, in the music that I write and also just the music that I listen to. But honestly, every song on this album is just incredible. I love every song equally, pretty much. Speed Trials, Alameda, 
Ballad of Big Nothing, Between the Bars, Pictures of Me, Donnie Number 5, Rose Parade, Punch and Judy, Angelus, Cupid's Trick, 2.45 a.m., Say Yes. So please just check this out. If there's any of these albums on this list so far that you, um, or any of the records I'm going to show you today, uh, if there's one that I would recommend you listen to that you haven't, it would be this one. So take note. Um, I have some other records by him coming up. Uh, next we have, here actually, let me show off this one first. Um, this album is very highly celebrated in indie circles. It's sort of like a, uh, it just has a huge, a huge cult following on the internet. Um, this is The Glow Part 2 by The Microphones. Um, it's just as, as circle jerk as this album is, I think it's probably one of the more deserved ones because it's just, it really is an incredible album. Probably in my top five favorites of all time. Um, the uh, artwork on, their, uh, on the inside of the gatefold, the photography is really beautiful. This guy's from um, Anacortes, Washington, Phil Elvin. And uh, so he takes really cool photography from that era. It comes with this really cool, these really cool inserts, like this um, uh, poster lyric sheet. It comes with some other inserts, like you know, different photography and stuff like that. A uh, little download card here. Um, yeah, it's just incredible stuff. It's, it's hard to even know what you would call it. Um, you know, indie rock, I guess. That's upside down, but you get the point. It's got lyrics on it. Um, all handwritten and everything. But unlike any you've ever heard, just um, really psychedelic, really melancholic, quite eclectic um, uh, folk-inspired in uh, music with lots of like experimental, noisy, and lo-fi elements. Um, so if you like, like, for example, if you like, like, Nutra Milk Hotel, um, I'm sure you would love this as well. Uh, and it's, it's in a, a very similar vein, I would say. Uh, this, especially in the Airplane Over the Sea, this album is sort of compared with that album quite a bit. But, um, there's still something really unique about it, so I would recommend that to, to anyone that's able to give it a chance. Um, let's see here. Up next, uh, this is another Microphones album, Microphones in 2020. As you can assume, this came out last year in 2020. Um, this is kind of the comeback record for the Microphones, because uh, he sort of dropped it. Phil Elvram, which is basically the mastermind behind the Microphones. It's not really a band, it's pretty much just them. He dropped that name and used Mount Erie for many years um, back in 2003 uh, instead of Microphones, but last year... He sort of resurrected that name and came out with this album, which got me really excited because my favorite releases from him are Under the Microphones moniker. And um, for anybody that's already a fan of the Microphones, this is really good. You'll definitely enjoy it. I, it's definitely not what I would recommend for a first-timer. I would recommend The Glow Part 2 if you want to get into it. But um, it, uh, it's actually one long 45-minute uh, song. And it's basically just very autobiographical. It really takes you on a trip. So if you want something that really is like in depth, um, uh, that really takes you on a journey, um, this is great for that. But it's going to be especially fascinating to people that are already fans of Phil Elvin. But um, all right, next album. Speaking of Nick Drake, this is Nick Drake. Pink Moon, just an absolute classic. Um, this has been a favorite of mine in the last year. I got this for Christmas, actually. This is my newest record in the collection. This is a gatefold. Um, this came out in 1972, I believe. And um, so, yeah, it's just one record, but, um, you know, it has a gatefold. So you got all the lyrics on the left side here and this really cool photo negative picture of Nick Drake. Just awesome, surrealist, sort of Dali-esque artwork. Um, check this out if you just want some top-quality folk uh, 
from the 70s. And like I said, a lot of people compare him to, to Elliot Smith, but the funny part is that Elliot Smith wasn't even inspired by this. Um, he said he'd listened to a couple songs and he really liked it, but it wasn't, it didn't like inspire his music or anything. So, um, yeah, definitely check this out. It's really stripped back, basically just acoustic guitar and, uh, some, uh, little piano overdubbed on the first track and, uh, that's about it, but that's his last record as well and probably my favorite of the three. Um, up next, I'm sure a lot of you recognize this, this is, um, Minecraft Volume Alpha by C418. Um, this is actually the first record uh, that I owned, I believe, so this is kind of what kicked off my entire collection, believe it or not. And, um, you know, even though it is a great soundtrack, I also think that this album just stands on its own as just, in general, a really good piece of... a really good composition of um, electronic, ambient music. Um... Most of it's like piano bass, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, but yeah, it's just, you know, objectively, in my opinion, a, a good piece of music, um, in any case, you know, even if it's not attached to Minecraft specifically, but, uh, yeah, great records, so, um, next we have, I've been listening to this one a lot lately, this is, uh, I got my shadow casted on that. The Creek Drank the Cradle by Iron and Wine. This is a phenomenal record. Um, if you liked Elliot Smith, I'm sure you'll like this too. It's in a similar sort of vein. But um, I would say a lot more uh, directly folk-inspired, because even though you could call Elliot Smith indie folk, um, it, w it wasn't really folk when you think about it. He didn't really, really like being called folk either, but this kind of embraces... Uh, that style a lot more. Um, so this is his first record. It's my personal favorite of his. All of his stuff is good, but I happen to like the a lot more stripped back and intimate um, uh, lo-fi stuff, which is what this is. I think it was all just recorded onto a four-track. Um, it's got Lion's Mane, Bird Stealing Bread, Faded from the Winter, which I actually know on guitar, Upward Over the Mountain, just some incredible songs like heartbreaking oftentimes but beautiful nonetheless um so yeah definitely give this a go if you haven't already um next up another elliot smith record this is probably my most prized uh addition to my collection i got this last year um this is elliot smith self-titled uh 25th yeah, 25th anniversary um, box set. So it's actually like a, a book. Um, and this is just awesome. This is probably um, arguably my, you know, next to either or, it's arguably my favorite Elliott Smith record. I like it pretty much just as much. Um, if it's not matched with either or, it's a very close second favorite. This is the album that came before, so it's a lot more stripped back, and it's mostly just acoustic guitar super intimate, like he's just whispering right in your ears. It's some of the most intimate music you'll ever hear. And, um, just, just really intense. And, um, you know, Elliot Smith definitely has a stigma of making really sad music. And, you know, I don't think that's entirely accurate. A lot of his, you know, a lot of the songs on this are very melancholic and, um, sad, but, and this is probably one of his darkest releases in my opinion. But, um, it's always had an uplifting quality to me anyway. Um, so I feel like it's kind of misleading just to act like, you know, no matter what you do, if you listen to L.A. Smith, it's gonna, you're depressed. Um, so you can see it has these really cool, the figures from the cover just sort of embossed on it, on the back too. Um, it's got these awesome, lots of really cool photography of Elliot in there. Um, different, um, like, excerpt, like, stories, people that knew Elliot, people that were in Heat Miser, uh, with him, which is the band that he was in, uh, it also comes with in the back a, um, uh, one of his first live recordings, it's like 10 tracks or something like that, which is really cool to hear, so, 
if you want to get into Elliott Smith, I recommend either or probably first. Whoops. Sorry about that. I would probably recommend either or first. And um, this one I might recommend next. Uh, it's just, yeah, there's nothing else like it. Um, let's see. These are, these box sleeves, or box uh, set sleeves are really hard to get on. There we go. Alright, up next. Um, some uh, alternate versions from that album. So this was actually an exclusive uh, Record Store Day release for Black, uh, for Black Friday. And um, it just has some tracks from that album couple outtakes, you know, alternate versions. So it has, like, Crazy Fucker studio version, which I think was an outtake. Um, satellite, alternate version, Mr. Good Morning, instrumental, Eagle in the Hay, trumpet, big decision, alternate version. So, honestly, I'm just really glad I was able to get my hands on this. Only five tracks, but um, for, like, a hardcore fan, you'll definitely, like I am, they'll definitely enjoy this. Comes on really cool... Uh, transparent vinyl with sort of these uh, little blue marbled swirls in there, and that way you can see that, but um, so yeah, just please check out that album, it's incredible. Uh, next album, this is Junkyard by The Birthday Party. The Birthday Party is one of one of the heaviest and, and most um, one of the most dark and sort of uh, harrowing um post-punk that I've heard. I believe this album came out like 93 or something like that, 92 maybe. And um, this is the band that Nick Cave started that with, so if you know Nick Cave's stuff, um, this is basically where it all began for him, so if you like him, definitely check this out. Um, super heavy, super dark, just great overall. So yeah, great post-punk record. Um, up next, this has been one of my favorite records lately. Um, Akron Family, self-titled. This was released on Young God Records, which if you don't know, um, Michael Gira, who's the front man of Swans, um, that's his label. And uh, he also produced this record. So if you like Angels of Light, which is sort of like Swans, it's one of his side projects with a very, um, but more folk influence. Uh, this is very along those lines, and they actually did a record together, so you'll definitely like this. Um, just really psychedelic and trippy and hypnotic and just beautiful overall. has these really cool diagrams of, like, sea life and stuff like that. So, yeah, just an awesome album. Um, next record, this is actually my dad's. Um, because my dad has a massive collection, um, basically a small record store, and uh, so, you know, I'll sort of borrow his wec records and we'll share quite often. Um, this is for all the fucked up children of the world. We give you Spaceman 3. If you haven't heard of Spaceman 3, they're an awesome um, psychedelic rock band from the 80s. This was their first uh, ever recording session from 1984, so it's not a studio album. Um, I've only heard the studio album, so I actually haven't listened to this, but that's why I brought it out of here, because I definitely need to soon. Um, so yeah, just really hypnotic, spacey, psychedelic stuff. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, definitely check these guys out. Um, yeah, and, and it comes on this, this cool, like, milky white sort of vinyl. So, um, next album. This is Mess by Liars. Liars is a sweet band. Um, they've experimented with so many styles, it's really sort of hard to, to pinpoint one genre on them, but, you know, experimental rock, and um, this album happens to be a bit of a stylistic shift. It has a lot more um, heavy use of, like, synthesizers and electronics, and uh, is really, like, dancey at, at times. You could, you, I think you could call it dance punk, something along those lines. I'm actually just noticing for the first time that there's, like, liars is, like, embedded on the front. It's very subtle, but it says mess. Um, but yeah, this is just a really cool record. It has some of their best songs, in my opinion. 
and like I said, a lot of them are like very danceable. Mask Maker, Pro Anti Anti, Mess on a Mission, Dark Slide. Those are all awesome songs. So yeah, give that a go if uh, if you like that kind of thing. Next record. This is actually a new record. This came out last year. Um, this is also my dad's, but I recommended it to him. Um, it's called As Lost Through Collision by Sprain. So this is like very inspired by post-hardcore from the 90s. So if you like Unwound, that kind of thing. Um, even like Slent, which uh, is what the next record is. Uh, I'm sure you'll really enjoy this. It's just super heavy, super... Um, super dark, very harrowing uh, stuff. So, if you're into that kind of thing, I'm sure you'll love this. This also comes on very similar uh, milky white sort of vinyl. One second. Um, sorry about this, but um, it's only like f like five tracks, I think. Um, but they're all a bit on the longer side, so. Um, there we go. There's a little bit of, of a swirl in there. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's pretty subtle, but um, yeah, great stuff. Dang, a lot of, a lot of static electricity in there. All right. Next album we have is just an absolute masterpiece, a turning point in rock. This is Spiderland by um, Slent. Um, if you like rock music in general, like, especially, you know, alternative genres of rock, but if you like any kind of rock, I would recommend this record, because it's just as uh, kind of underappreciated as it was when it initially came out, it's kind of become known as one of the most, um, uh, like, important and influential albums to rock music, so, um, definitely give this a go, um, this is only six tracks, has lots of influences from um, a lot of people actually consider this to be one of the albums to one of the first albums to develop like uh, the post rock genre, um, but it also has elements of like of of hard you know post hardcore, noise rock, math rock, even slowcore even like all kinds of stuff because a lot of these songs are actually like Donny Man, um, a lot of them have little like interludes that are, are very quiet and sparse and um slow um it's just a super dynamic record and at the highs it's crushing and it's just really awesome stuff so um again for any rock fan i recommend checking this out because it if you give it enough listens it'll, it'll blow your mind um this record is dusters self-titled um, if you haven't listened to Duster, I highly recommend their first album, specifically Stratosphere, came out in 1998. They came out with that record, Contemporary Movement, in, um, 2000, I think, and, uh, and then they just sort of disappeared off the face of the earth for, like, I guess, 19 years, and then last year they came out with this comeback album, which is their self-titled, actually, and, um, if you, like, really really cozy, pretty mellow, sort of slow, like, um, lo-fi indie rock, uh, you'll love these guys, with very, like, um, space, spacey sort of themes, like, one of the tracks on this is Copernicus Crater, um, Ghost World, so you can see in the names they have those sorts of themes, um, this one's a bit noisier than their early stuff, and it's still a really good record, but it's not my favorite from Duster, um, but definitely listen to it if you've already checked out their other stuff. Um, so yeah. Uh, next we have "House of Sugar" by Alex G. Alex G, in my opinion, is one of the one of the most um, creative uh, minds out there in indie rock right now. One of, one of the most creative uh, songwriters. A lot of guys also compare. A lot of people also compare this guy to Elliot Smith, like the modern day Elliot Smith. But you know, I, that was actually what turned me on to him in the first place because I was really into Elliot Smith, and I heard some, you know, I read that online somewhere, and I was like, well, I gotta check this out. But, um, but you know, it's uh, 
the more I listen to it, again, I, I don't, you know, you can definitely see the comparisons on certain songs, but he's just developed his own sound over the years that it, it really is just, you know, kind of its own thing. Um, although I'm sure Elliot Smith was among his influences, but yeah, so this is his newest record. It's awesome stuff. Um, probably not the first record I would recommend from him, not my favorite, but has some awesome songs on it like Gretel and um, Hope, uh, Southern Sky. I mean, it has some, some absolute bangers on it, some of his best tracks. Has this really cool, um, like, blue or uh, purple marbled vinyl as well, which matches the cover really well, which is awesome. And it also comes with um, this, uh, whoops, I just touched the grooves of that with my fingers. Don't do that, kids. I don't recommend it. That was very accidental. Um, uh, because I, like, pre-ordered the, the exclusive, or the limited edition, comes with this little, um, little seven inch, which has an acoustic version of Gretel and Sugar House on it, which I actually like more than the, the, out, uh, the version on the record. So, I highly recommend Alex G., He's one, I've listened to so much Alex G over the years, it's like, um, so the next record that I have coming up here in a second, um, is also by Alex G, and it's probably what I would recommend, uh, if you want to start getting into him, uh, this is Trick, one of my favorite, one of the ones that, probably the record that got me the most into him, um, I think the first record I heard was Rocket, which is the one that came before House of Sugar. And it's great, but this was the one that really hooked me. Um, just super, a lot of it's super catchy. At times very melancholic. and um, But just, just generally really vibey um, indie rock. It's kind of, you know, don't really, you just kind of have to listen to it to really get a good idea. Um, you might know the song uh, Sarah on this album which is one of my favorite Alex G songs, but that song actually got popularized recently because um, it's been showing up on TikTok a lot, which is kind of funny. But, um, you know, whatever gets people into Alex G, um, I'm on board with, so. But yeah, if you like that song, be sure to give the, the whole album a chance because it's, it's great stuff. Um, this right here is one of my favorite post-hardcore records. This is Kill the Lights by Lowercase. Again, I feel like this is a severely, another severely underrated um, post-hardcore album. Um, if you like Slint that I mentioned earlier, definitely check these guys out. Um, yeah, Lowercase, just an awesome heavy band from the 90s. Um, truly hardcore. There's like some She Takes Me, Slightly Days, Neurasthenia. Those are some of my favorite songs on this record. And yeah, it's just, it's just awesome. It's just, just heavy stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely check this out if you like that kind of thing. Um, next, this record I'm not as familiar with, but it's really cool. Um, this is Violent Green. This album's called Eros. This isn't my favorite record from them. Um, and this is actually my dad's album, so I haven't listened to it a lot, but, um, but these guys are on Up Records, which is an awesome label. Uh, the band I mentioned earlier, Duster, was on Up Records. Um, same thing with Modest Mouse and, you know, Built to Spill. So, yeah, these guys are legit. But probably one of the bands I hear about the least from that label. Um, but from what I remember, they just have a really distinctive sound, just, like, really unlike anything else I've heard. I mean, you'd probably consider it indie rock, but it just has this very eclectic... Um, vocal style and instrumentation. If you if you want something kind of different in that realm, definitely check it out. So, um, yeah, really cool record. Uh, next album, this is Ghost of the Great Highway by Sun Kill Moon. Um, this album, this is kind of the album that made me fall in love with Sun Kill Moon. I got it a couple years ago for Easter on vinyl. Um, I'd heard it before, but I really wanted to get it on vinyl, so... Um, yeah, this is just, like, if, if you want some, some great, uh, heart, just some folk rock, 
that's just really okay. solid. Definitely check this out. It has um, this guy's from Ohio as well, cool. Mark Kozilek. If you've heard of uh, Red House Painters, that that was the first band that he was in. Um, Glenn Tipton, Carry Me Ohio, Salvador um, Sanchez, Gentle Moon, Duck Who Kim. I mean, it has some incredible songs on it. Um, the only thing about this is, uh, last year Mark Kozilek, the guy, the like the songwriter for this band, um, what like a couple women came out and accused him of rape. Uh, which just really, like, sort of made a lot harder to, like, enjoy his music in the same way ever since. And if I'm being quite honest, I haven't really listened to his music ever since, just because it's kind of hard to, because his music is just so, like, um, from the heart that it really changes the way that you can think of it and hear it, even if you try to separate the artist and the, uh, the art, just because this is so intimate, it's, it's kind of hard to, to put that out of mind, um. But, you know, it's a beautiful record anyway. I hope we'll be able to come back to it soon and, and appreciate it the way that I was used to be able to. And um, he came out with a record a few years back, but uh, Benji, which is another one of my favorite Sun Kill Moon records, a lot of people love that album. Um, this is the first Sun Kill Moon album, which is what really got me into him. But, uh, yeah, you know, a great album nonetheless, but it really is unfortunate. Um... This is Grace by Jeff Buckley, another classic. Um, a lot of people praise this album for, for being one of the greatest of all time, and I would definitely agree with that. Um, it's a really sad story with Jeff Buckley. Um, same thing with Elliot Smith. It's really such a shame that we lost him. Um, Jeff Buckley, uh, yeah, this is the only album that he ever put out. Um, his dad made music as well, Tim Buckley, and they both had really untimely... Um, young deaths but uh if you you know this is just when it comes to alternative rock this is just some of the some of the the best that it gets um mojo pen grace last goodbye my like wine so real hallelujah lover you should have come over i mean every out every song honestly i like i'm not a huge fan of like eternal life um pretty much every other song is incredible um if you just, it's just some of the most soul, soulful, maybe even a little bit of blues rock influences in there. Um, if you want that kind of thing, you'll really, um, you'll really enjoy this. And from a songwriting perspective, it's very intimate in the way that, in a very similar way that Elliot Smith is. Um, so yeah, definitely check this album out. Probably in my top ten favorites of all time. This is another record that's probably in my top 10 favorites of all time. I, if you haven't noticed, I try to get like my favorite records on vinyl just so I have them. This is Perfect From Now On by Built to Spill. This is basically, is like for me, the high, wa the high watermark of indie rock. Um, and just this band in general. Um, this is probably my favorite album by then. If not, um, it's probably almost exactly matched with... Uh, the album that came before this, I believe, um, There's Nothing Wrong With Love, is also an incredible album. If you want to get into Belt to Spill, I would probably recommend listening to that first, because this is a, a little more on the experimental side, um, whereas There's Nothing Wrong With Love is very, um, in my opinion, very uh, approachable and accessible, really poppy and catchy, and it, it's just, this stuff will stay in your head forever. Um, same thing with Elliot Smith, the, the way that he wrote melodies was just incredible on like melodies you'll just never forget as soon as you hear them so um this is yeah this is awesome this album's um a little more on the experimental side the songs are a bit longer the lyrical themes are awesome too like really um stuff that you can like that really relate to like my childhood um that's another reason another reason why i love this album so much but just some awesome instrumentation too like you get cello in there and uh stuff like that um there's only i think it's only eight tracks but yeah it's great um this is another actually no that's not coming up yet um this is an album from slow dive this used to be my brother's actually um but i have it now so 
This is Hide Your Eyes, which I believe these are like some outtakes and um, like deep cuts from Slow Dive. If you haven't heard of Slow Dive, they're an awesome um, shoegaze band, very in the lines of like uh, My Bloody Valentine, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this has like some deep cuts on it, demos and stuff like that. Summer Day, Bleed, Sleep, Silver Screen, Dagger. I know that song. I love that song. Joy, Hide Your Eyes, Ending, Richard, I Saw the Sun. But yeah, it's just on this really cool minimalist, uh, you know, sort of cardstock cover, which I love. Um, if you like shoegaze, honestly, if you like shoegaze, you're probably already listening to Slow Dive, but you know, obviously if you're not, you need to, so. Um, this album, I actually haven't listened to before. Um, my brother, again, my brother owned this one before, but he um, left it behind when he moved out, so. Uh, a Place to Bury Strangers. Um, seems like a really cool band. As far as I know, it's um, shoegaze, similar to uh, uh, to uh, Slow Dive. But, um, yeah, I mean, give it a go if you like that kind of thing. Uh, another album from Built to Spill. This is their first album. One that I also didn't hear enough uh, appreciation for. I generally hear the most love for There's Nothing Wrong With Love, um... Perfect from now on, which is fair because they're my favorites. Keep it like a secret is also incredible. Um, but this this is really something unique. Their first record was kind of their most um, experimental, I feel like, in certain ways. Um, you know, the songs can get a, a bit longer and a bit more abstract and dissonant and experiment with different things like that. Um, so if you want to challenge yourself a bit more with Built to Spill, definitely check this album out. This was a record store day release a couple years back um but you know in my opinion it, it's not quite as developed as some of the later stuff uh like on their next album where they they get into it uh and you know, they kind of settle into their sound a lot more comfortably um another band along the lines of um they'll spill modest mouse um modest mouse probably wouldn't exist as they are if it weren't for built to spill they're like a huge influence on them so if you like Modest Mouse, listen to Built to Spill. If you like Built to Spill, listen to Modest Mouse, if you're not already. This is their first album. One of my favorite indie rock albums. It's just incredible. Drama Mean, Custom Concern, Head South, Novocaine Stain, Ohio. Um, lots of great songs on it. Probably my favorite Modest Mouse record would be the next one, um, The Lonesome Crowded West. But this is the first they came out with, and um, it's pretty, pretty freaking solid for a debut. So um, I would definitely recommend this if you haven't listened to it yet, because it just it just has some awesome songs on it. Modest Mouse is yeah legendary. Um, next record, getting to the uh, the end here. Oops, looks like they fell. Got this a couple years ago on my birthday. Um, God Ween Satan by Ween. This is Ween's first album, um, I believe, and uh, it's pretty lo-fi, pretty, a lot of these, I believe, are just like demos they record on the tape, um, so, you know, really raw and everything, but, um, but it has some awesome songs on it. If, you know, you probably know Ween from um, Ocean Man, if anything, you probably heard that song. They played it during the credits of uh, the Spongebob movie, Ocean Man, but, you know. That album or that song kind of has a goofy association, but I mean, yeah, these these guys are awesome all over though. Um, most of their stuff is pretty tongue in cheek, um, uh, you know, lyrically and everything. And this album definitely is. It has some pretty pretty obscene songs on it, but it also has uh, "Birthday Boy," which is probably my all time favorite Ween song. Um, very noisy, very raw, but just from the heart, you know. So. If you love that kind of thing, definitely listen to Ween. Um, another album from Built to Spill. This is actually an EP. Um, one of their first uh, EPs, I believe. Um, the Fruit That Ate Itself. So if you like that album, if you liked um, This Is a Long Drive or Lonesome Crowded West, this is very much in the same vein. And I'm assuming a lot of people probably overlook this because it's just an EP. But, you know, it has some of my favorites on it, like The Way Down, 
um, Sunspots in the House of the Late Scapegoat. Um, some pretty goofy titles, but yeah, really good stuff. How many tracks? Six. Six tracks. Um, I believe we just have one record left here. Um, this is also one of the first records that I got, because I used to be really into these guys. Uh, MGMT, Oracular Spectacular. Um, this is like an electro-pop uh, sort of record. I mean, if you like pop, uh, I'm sure you'll love this album. You know, it's pretty easy to approach. But it's also quite experimental and, and psychedelic, and I think it's a really good way to get into those genres if you're trying to. Um, but, you know, it has some hits on it, like Electric Feel, Kids... It's also got some of my favorites, like um, Weekend Wars, Time to Pretend, Fourth Dimensional Transition, The Handshake, Of Moons, Birds and Monsters. Um, so yeah, this is just uh, just an awesome album. A classic. Uh, even though, you know, it's a newer one. But this is probably my favorite album by them, if not um, Little Dark Age, which came later. But, um, so yeah. That's the last record I have for you guys today. It's about it. Um, but, you know, I know that was a lot to go over. I tried to make it sort of as brief as possible without rambling on too much about every album. But um, hopefully there's some albums uh, that I showed you today that, you know, you'll be able to get into or you'll enjoy. Um, it's really all I ask for. Sounds a little pretentious to say it, but, you know, these albums are tried and true. Like, I've, through extensive listening, I've concluded that they're genuinely very good and very solid so um yeah the you know i think there's hopefully something uh everyone there can enjoy even though um you know it maybe not the most diverse i know i didn't have any hip-hop records in there um that's just because i need to get more hip-hop records i had a few that my brother took with him but um so yeah i i do want to expand my collection a little more in terms of genre and everything but um you know, I know most of that is indie-oriented, um, but, you know, nonetheless, I hope you'll enjoy them. Um, just some awesome music. Just wanted to give you guys an idea of what I listen to. If you want to, drop in the comments um, what you're listening to or, you know, the albums you know from this, whatever you, you um, maybe some of them you listen to and enjoyed or some of them you already know. Uh, yeah, just let me know. So, um, thanks, guys. I'll, uh, Talk to you in the next video whenever that comes. Um, you know, this video doesn't really mark like a promise that I'm going to continue to make videos or whatever. It's just kind of a one-off thing, but who knows. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you soon.